right, let's stand together and sing once again. Turn to page 109, 109. Standing together as we sing, Send the Light, page 109, Send the Light. There's a call coming through the restless way. God bless you. I see several visitors tonight. God bless you, Brother Joe. Good to see you tonight, your dear wife and others that's here. And so uh, it's great, Brother Mrs. Han here tonight. God bless you. Thank you for coming. And uh, so many other ones. And thank you so much for being here tonight. If you're visiting, would you be kind enough to be seated, please? Would you do that? If you're visiting, be kind enough to be seated. Our ushers are going to come. They're going to give you a visitor's card. The Hans don't need to sit. Joe, you and your wife don't need to sit. And uh, you're not visitors. You're just uh, uh, just here tonight. And so, and uh, but uh, God bless you. Uh, good. All right. Super. Thank you. Be seated. And uh, I've got good news. You want to hear good news? How many like to hear good news? Raise your hand. You like to hear good news? Um, uh, are you, Are you ready? Mrs. Barker went home. She now not home to be with the Lord. I mean, she went home. Okay. <laughs> And uh, she, she had a good surgery, and they were able to correct the back. And she, to me, it's amazing. It really is amazing. It, when I was coming up as a young man, somebody that went in for heart surgery, they'd be in the hospital two, three weeks. Now you go in, you get heart surgery, you go eat lunch by noon. I mean, it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. But she had back surgery, and she went home. Uh, Brother Barker uh, called me and said, hey, we're on the way home. We're heading out through the woods. We're almost there. And so what a wonderful blessing that was. And so I thought I'd share that. That was just a neat thing. Uh, please don't forget to get to know the missionaries. Uh, and, uh, of course, get to know their children, get to know things about their ministry. And uh, pray for them and pray that God would use them in their prospective places to be able to go. And that's a great blessing. Anybody else have a guest tonight you'd like to introduce? We, we already introduced a couple that's here. Anybody have a guest tonight? Would you stand if you have a guest tonight to introduce? All right. Well, thank you so much. Let's give these couples a big round of applause, would you please? Would you stand with me once again and turn to page number 451, 451. We'll stand and sing. The old account was settled long ago, page 451. be seated if you will I want to give you just a couple of notes of reminders tonight we're taking up the special offering for the missionaries we'd like to be able to take them shopping tomorrow 
And so if you could help out with that special offering tonight that we've talked about for several weeks, that would be a wonderful blessing uh, to be able to do that. And uh, we try to, uh, I know I traveled for 12 years on the, on the road as an evangelist, and it was always a delight when I'd pull up into a, a place for our family's sake where we did uh, have opportunity to do special things with people as they came and uh, showed us different things to do in the area. And so it is with our missionaries. We try to do special things with them. Uh, it's an annual event that, of course, Brother Butler would take them down to the George W. Bush Presidential Library. It's an annual event we do for our missionaries because that's almost like a once-in-a-lifetime event, unless they just come here exclusively to visit that. They'll never have a chance, most likely, to visit it again. And so we try to do special things for them. Tomorrow, we like to take them shopping. And so I'll be taking the men. My dear wife will be taking the ladies for a little bit of shopping. Us as men, we'll take them out, do shopping. And boy, I tell you what, they'll just buy stuff just like that. Then we'll come back, drink coffee, and wait on the women uh, to get everything done that they want to get done. They'll go in and pick out stuff and just be done with it quick. And, uh, and so, but you can tell because of the way that we dress, we're not all that great at it anyway. But, uh, but uh, so please give tonight on that behalf, if you would. And then uh, tonight we have some special gifts we like to give to our missionaries. These are letters from our young people uh, that uh, they have written to you. And uh, we appreciate you so much. And so if you're in charge of one of the bags, if you deliver those to the missionaries now, please. And these are letters from our young people, young people that's in our academy, also young people that's in our homeschool uh, uh, programs that the parents have with their young people. And so these are just letters from uh, our young people just to say we love you and thank you so much for being our heroes and traveling America, raising the funds that you need and being able to go back to the field if that's what you're doing uh, or be able to get to the field. I'm going to have our missionaries to stand. Would you please just stand where you are? And that tonight I think it would be a wonderful thing if you would give them a rousing applause tonight. And God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, and be seated, if you will. Brother Garlic is one of our missionaries tonight. He's going to come, and he's going to share his heart uh, about the mission field and tell what God has called him to do. And uh, he preached in our Spanish department last night, did a great job, and so we praise the Lord for him. Uh, our missionaries are also speaking every morning. Uh, that's at the 11 o'clock hour up in the college chapel area. We would ask that you go by, of course, the, the college office right out here, uh, no later than 1055 to pick up your pass if you're going to come in. I do want to say this. Thank you for coming. Thursday night, good crowd for Thursday night. God bless you. And I realize many people, I've talked to many people in the hallway, and matter of fact, people coming into the choir said, how was your day? And they said, we're tired. They worked all day and came straight in from work. No doubt hadn't had supper yet. And uh, thank you for your sacrifice. I love you. And just thank you for doing a great job putting the Lord first and coming to church. That's what Christians ought to do. And uh, you've done a great job in so doing it. Brother Garlic, would you come please? And he's going to uh, share his heart tonight about where God has called him to. Amen. Well, uh, uh, if I can, I, I'm going to ask uh, to play the video real quick. And I'll come up and, and kind of clarify that a little bit more as we go forward. Thank you. Somos la familia Garlo, y es mi privilegio introducirles a nuestro ministerio. Yo soy un evangelista con el ministerio de la espada. En la espada, nuestra misión es la gran comisión. La gran comisión se puede resumir en tres puntos. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and translate Primero, it for llevar el evangelio a toda uh, criatura. Our mission is to take the, Segundo, is the great commission. enseñar a cada creyente And the great commission can be summed up into three points. The first is tercero, to take the gospel to every creature. Preparar, Second, to take the teachings of Christ to every saint. And third, to teach young men and women to go out and repeat the process. And that was the heart and soul of my grandfather, Dr. Roland Garlic, when he started the ministry uh, 45 years ago. And so uh, our job was to go out into the churches that already exist and uh, to, to encourage them to get started fulfilling the Great Commission in their area. Now, uh, did you get it figured out, brother? Amen. Okay. Oh, I guess I'll just keep going. Okay. Uh, they turned off the audio. Okay. Well, uh, so first of all, what we do is we go out into the uh, in, into the churches and we, we help them get a systematic plan to go to every every creature in their area, and to take the gospel to everybody living in their in their area. And secondly, we go and we help them and we provide them the discipleship materials to go and and teach those new believers. 
you know, a, a church that is fulfilling the Great Commission right where they are is able to go out and start another church that's going to fulfill the Great Commission. If you're not fulfilling the Great Commission here, very unlikely you'll do it over there. It's hard to fix a mistake halfway through the, the production line. But uh, so I want to show you this is a harvest project is what we're what are is what the focus of the ministry of Lost Body is right now. And it's a systematic plan in Latin America to take the gospel to every creature. Uh, we started in Central America and uh, with the help of local church pastors and missionaries that are already on the field, we've been able to reach three million families with the gospel uh, there in Central America. And, and you know, uh, only eternity is going to reveal the impact that that's going to have on the culture there. But we're already seeing a great harvest there. Uh, we always uh, we teach them to go out and give a clear presentation of the gospel, to take a, a gift to every home, a copy of the John and Romans a portion of scripture, and then we give the, the, the pastors the discipleship materials that they need uh, for, to follow up. And Because it's not just go and reach them for Christ, but it's to teach them to observe all things. And so you can see, uh, just, just, the, and just imagine the harvest that God is giving to us. And so uh, now, uh, this year, we're, God is opening the door for us to do that in Mexico now. Uh, in every one of our conferences, we always encourage every believer to be diligent to take the gospel to their relatives, their family, to those that they know, and then also to give them the follow-up that they need. Uh, right there, you can see in that picture, uh, we've had last year thousands of people who raised their hand saying that if you'll give me a copy of uh, the little track, the How to Be Saved track, and if you come by that my grandfather wrote, uh, I'll go to my family, I'll read it with them this week. Yeah. And uh, we've seen so many people get saved for the, and, or lead their first soul to Christ, just, just going through that little book and just letting the Bible do the talking for them. Uh, you can see here, uh, these are just some of the men and women, uh, some of the men that God's called to preach in past of conferences that we've held with Las Bada. And... Uh, uh, now they've gone out, started their own churches, they're coming back, and they've got young people who are wanting to get into the ministry, and so we're partnering with them to train them in four specific areas. Number one, their, uh, their walk with God. Number two, their personal character. Uh, number three, their, uh, their knowledge of the scriptures. And number four, uh, practical experience fulfilling the Great Commission there in their local church. Uh, you, there's uh, thousands of men and women right now across Latin America that are being trained. Right now in Mexico, there is enough local churches, there's enough believers already that we could reach 10 million families with the gospel. But we need your help because, uh, quite honestly, uh, paper isn't free. But uh, we ask that you would continue to pray for us. We're in the work, but we need your help. Now, uh, this little video presentation here, quite honestly, uh, to, to, to try to encapsulate everything that our ministry does uh, is very, very difficult to do in just a short little video. And so uh, uh, our, our mission is the Great Commission. And our goal is to go out into the world and to, and to go out into Latin America. And, and, and by the end product is the world, Pastor. Because uh, some, of, some of these, uh, these, these Latin American countries, they can get into some, other, some of these countries that, that you and I could never get into with our American passports. And they have access to get into to places and to reach, the, the, reach them with the gospel where we can't. And so uh, that's our goal. We're going out into the... And that, that, that was the heart of my grandfather and now my, my father. And, and uh, I'm so privileged for the heritage that I have with them. You know, it's, it's, it's an honor that God would, could use me. You know, and, and, you know if, if God required perfect servants, well, I don't think any of us qualify. But he requires obedient servants. And so uh, here I am in obedience, going out and doing the work. And I know that uh, every one of the missionaries here, they're doing the same thing. And I know that a lot of you young people here, God wants to use you in the same way. Uh, when I was called to preach, I was eight years old. I was reading in Timothy and it said, preach the word. Be in, in season, instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And I, I just said, well, well, I guess that's it. I'm supposed to preach the word. And uh, got to the next church, and the pastor, I was standing there with my dad. He said, young man, I know what you want to be when you grow up. I said, you do? He said, yes, sir, I do. He said, you're going to be a doctor, aren't you? I said, no, sir. How about a policeman? No, sir. A soldier? No. Well, what are you going to, what are you going to do when you grow up? He said, God's called me to preach. He said, well, bless God. You're going to preach for us tonight in our service. <laughs> I'm a little kid of eight years old. My, my, my dad, he helped me so much that night. 
he helped me. He said, if you're going to preach, you, you, you should probably should have something to preach about. I said, that sounds good, Dad. He said, so what do you, he said, if you're going to preach about something, it should probably be about the Bible. He said, yeah, that, that makes sense. He said, well, what do you know about the Bible? And I remember that we had just studied the book of Jonah. I said, I know the story of Jonah. And he said, well, when you're going to preach, you've got to make sure you ha- leave something for them to hang their hat on. You've got to have some points. You've got to have some, something for them to, 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 to apply to their lives. So he helped me there that night, and I got up there, and I remember I was most scared that my dad was going to leave me up there by myself, that he was going to send me up there, and, and then him and pastor were going to take off to go out and eat and get, leave me to finish the service by myself. I don't know why I, that was my fear, but that's what I was afraid of. So I said, Dad, you're not going to leave me, right? And he said, no, son, I'm not going to leave you. And I remember I got up there, I said the first point, first thing, you can't run from God because he's everywhere. You know, Jonah tried to run, but he couldn't. And I looked back, my dad was still there. And I said the second point, you know, uh, it's dangerous to get in the boat with a Jonah. Be careful who you hang around with. You know, sometimes, you know, when God sends the storm after Jonah, you can get caught up in it. And I looked back and my dad was still there. I said the third point, you know, you don't have to be as stubborn as Jonah and stay in the belly of a big fish three days and three nights. If you ever run from God, repent sooner and get out faster. And I looked back and my dad was smiling. I remember I I couldn't even see over the pulpit. They had to bring a chair up so I could stand on top of it. After I'd finished preaching, I went and sat down with the rest of my family. My dad got up there and finished the service. And then... uh, after service, my dad pulled me aside. He said, son, I want you to know that uh, the day that tonight I got to be here with you, and that was an honor for me. He said, but someday you're going to have to go and preach, and I'm not going to be there with you. He said, but I want you to remember that your heavenly Father will never leave you nor forsake you. And I can tell you that's been so true in my life. And now, uh, this past year, we found out that my dad has pancreatic cancer. And outside of a miracle... God's going to take him home in a little while, a lot sooner than we'd expected. And so, uh, but he said, Ben, uh, you know, I've been running the ministry all these years, but it looks like uh, God wants you to start taking over. So he said, I want you to, you, he said, you, you've already know how, what to do, how to do everything. You already know what to do. You grew up with it. You traveled with me to all the conferences. He said, but you got to make sure you can take care of your family. And so uh, that's why I'm here tonight. I want to make sure I can take care of my family because that's my first ministry. And if I can take care of my family, then I can be out there and we can see those millions of people saved. And we can reach this world for Christ because God wouldn't give us a task that we couldn't fulfill. And he said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And I believe we can do it. Pastor, thank you so much for letting me come up here and share my heart. We need your help. But more than that, we need your prayers. Please pray for us. All right, and that's a bow in prayer for the garlic family. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for what a wonderful uh, testimony, Lord, to see generation after generation, Lord, doing the work uh, that you've called them to do, Lord. And thank you for allowing uh, Brother Garlic to follow in the footsteps of his uh, dad and his grandfather, but most of all, following in the steps of Jesus. We pray that you'd provide the needs uh, in their life, Lord, provide the support that they need, continue to help them, Lord, as they win souls, continue to help them as they plant churches, Lord, and disciple folks and uh, teach folks in the Bible Institute and all of those things that we just uh, heard about. And I pray that you Father, continue, Lord, for many generations to come to keep the work going. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us the privilege to be able to have heard that and seen that. And I just pray that you Father, your blessings upon him as well as his family and the ministry uh, there in Mexico. And then, Lord, just pray and ask any Father that you would uh, just help a great harvest of souls be saved. Bless the remainder of the service, uh, especially with Brother Pertell, Lord, as he preaches here in just a short while. And I pray that you speak to our hearts about what you'd have us to do in the area of missions, whether it's, whether it's to give or to go or both. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to be sensitive to your leading. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Let's stand one more time and turn to page number 96. We'll stand and sing, Bring Them In. Page 96 on the first and the last verse. Team choir, you can go ahead and fill the choir loft as we sing. 
just a minute and try and have a part with a special gift that we're trying to do for tomorrow and that would be a wonderful blessing let's pray father we thank you for tonight we thank you for the privilege to be able to come and be able to enjoy good good solid bible preaching father thank you for the testimony of brother garlic lord i remember being with his granddad down in missions texas and then with his dad and now to see a third generation uh, being able to carry forth the word of god Oh, dear Father, what a wonderful blessing. And thank you for the other missionaries here tonight. Bless them for being in our church this week. They could have been anywhere in the world, but you put us together this week for this purpose. And thank you for them. And bless all that's said and done tonight through the preaching. Bless the offering now as we take it. And Lord, bless the giver too. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, please. Let's have a word of prayer as we prepare for the teen choir to sing. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for how you worked in our hearts last night. 
And Lord, I pray that you'd meet with us once again tonight. Holy Spirit, I pray that our hearts would be open and receptive to the leading of uh, Dr. Partell and the words that you've given him to speak. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be open to uh, all that you have for us tonight. I pray that you'd be with the special music here in just a moment. And Lord, we thank you so much for all that you've done. Please bless and meet with us tonight again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Wasn't that good? Wasn't that good? Thank the Lord for good young people. What a blessing that is. And these kids go out soul winning. They work on bus routes. I'm so proud of them. They just do a fantastic job. Parents, you're doing a good job. Keep it up. Just keep it up. You're doing a good job. And we're so proud of them. And David, boy, I tell you, David did good. Lean singing. Uh, Brother Jonathan's in Napa, California with Mike Ray this week and, and, uh, and helping out there with that conference. And David got up here and he led those young people just like a professional would do. And I appreciate that. Uh, just a super. Well, it's a good to have Brother Pertell. I've known Brother Pertell. We're trying to figure out how long we've known each other, but uh, it, we've known each other so long we've forgotten how long we've known each other. But uh, I would say, I would dare say we've known the Pertells for at least 30 years at least, uh, you know, and so, but uh, what a blessing it is. And of course, God's worked in his life in a marvelous way. 
it's one thing for a, a man to get out and do it's another thing for a man to get out and do when God is all in it and has his hand upon him and that's what I can say about Jerry Pertell I mean ever since I've known him he's walked with the Lord ever since I've known him and his dear wife they've been instrumental in helping people loving people pointing people to Christ helping people to come know Christ as their savior in every age bracket but he goes as he said last night to places where um, very few people go he goes to the fairs he goes to the carnivals uh, he does the backyard Bible clubs. Uh, he does the what we call the blitz teams that goes off. And for several weeks, they go on a bus and they just do Bible club after Bible club after Bible club every day progressively uh, for a week. And then they'll go someplace else and uh, and they'll do that. Vacation Bible schools last year uh, was uh, in uh, 363 different activities uh, being able to give out the gospel and that's the type of people I want to be able to come and challenge us. Uh, somebody, somebody said your walk talks and your talk talks, but your walk talks louder than your talk talks. And I believe that. I like somebody that's going to get up and walk the talk. 13,464 people heard the gospel last year. Then 1,999 under his ministry bowed their head and said they got saved. And what a wonderful blessing that is. He'll be our speaker tonight. Uh, tomorrow night we'll have Brother Marco uh, Teresa, which is uh, a, a, a protege, I guess I could say, of his ministry. Uh, and he can tell, can you tell a little bit about that tonight just before you preach? And he'll tell you a little bit about Brother Marco. And, uh, but Marco came up underneath him and just uh, is doing a great job. Let's all stand and give him a welcome tonight. Would you do it, please? Hey, thank you for coming tonight. Thank you for coming. Appreciate you coming. Y'all sit down. We'll give Jesus a hand, all right? Give Jesus a hand. Uh, you know, uh, I look back over the years, you know, and uh, I, I want to be in the ministry. That's my goal, to be in the ministry 40 years, and then uh, that passed me up. And, I mean, I said, well, where'd that go in 45 years? And you, you just don't know when it's, it's over. But one of the things, Incredible blessings. I, I really want to be a PR man for you doing the will of God in your life. I really do. Now, it's a faith promise thing, okay? I know it's a faith promise thing, but I tell you, my heart, uh, what I, you know, I just can't help it. I get in front of young people. I, every time I see young people, I said, oh, my goodness. That's the, oh, my goodness. I said, oh, if they only knew what God had for their life. Uh, I love being a design engineer. I used to create stuff. I love to do that. I love to come up with stuff. And I still have ideas all the time. Ideas, ideas, they just come. I, I'll be going down the road, doesn't matter. I just have, God made me that way. And you know, uh, a watch is an amazing thing. Most people don't know how a watch works, but you know, there's a quartz crystal. This is El Cheapo. It's the same as the expensive one. They've got a quartz crystal in there, and it's got a little computer chip looking at the crystal vibrate. And every time it vibrates so many million times, it says one. That's all it's got. To, that's all you got to do, son. Every time you see so many million cycles, just pluck one. Move a little hand. That's that second hand. You know, and that thing's real accurate, man. Within a few seconds a year. Well, how do you think that happened? I'll tell you, there was a watch factory exploded. And, buddy, I tell you, those parts came together and fell out of the sky. You say, you're the biggest idiot that ever walked through. I mean, no, it exploded a billion, billion times. Well, you go a billion, 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 you're still going to get these parts flying around. You're not going to get watches flying out of the air. You were made for a reason. Now, if you got this watch and tried to nail a nail, if it, what was it, one of those uh, fancy things from uh, uh, Switzerland, you know, $5,000, you're going to nail it, put a nail, what? You're nuts, man, that is a watch. Well, no, it's a watch, not a hammer. Well, the, the watch was made to keep time. Would you say so? Yeah, so it made to keep time. Well, do you think the God that created and spoke the universe into existence that very well knows the hairs of your head, knows every cell of your body, all six trillion of them, 
that put enough information in your body, if you put it in books that fill the Grand Canyon 200 times, do you think the God that did that didn't know what he was doing when he did it? And didn't know specifically why he makes you exactly what you are, that he wouldn't have a specific thing for you to do that would glorify him. How now, brown cow? <laughs> that you would say, get your hand off of me. Whoa, buddy, hold it. No, no. See, if you only could see what he had planned, it would take your breath away. And when you saw it, you'd say, oh, my goodness, that's what I want to do. And I'm here to tell you, I absolutely fell into the will of God like if somebody had stumbled into a hole, I fell into it. That's all I can tell you. I fell into it. I didn't know what I was doing, but I'd given myself up to God. And along this wonderful path, that God put me on. Being like in the dark and just seeing one step at a time. I ain't going to show you no more. Just, there's a step. But where am I going? Next step. I know, but where am I going? Next step. Along this path that you take by faith, guess what you run into? Oh, my goodness. Woo! Friends that are real. Hi-ya! Friends that are 24 karat gold that are not there for the money because there isn't any <laughs> or for the fame it's not there either at a carnival <laughs> or a five-day club with a dog parking in 115 degrees Fahrenheit in Louisiana and some mosquitoes biting you. But along the way and when sometimes you don't know what you do, you bump into because you are in God's great circumstance. Pow! Woo! What is it? It is the will of God. And you get to know these incredible people that come up and tell you they're going to the mission field and they're turning their back on everything everybody else wants. Right. Yeah, Amen. correct? Yes. Call me a missionary. Well, yeah, but man, I still got my big house and our kids are still here with 700 miles of us. But I get around people that turn their back on Everything. Flew off to the Kufula Futa River in Zambia, Africa, where the cerebral palsy, cerebral malaria is right there in that, that river. And I get to be at this. 2,000 people out there sitting down around elephant grass, sitting on the ground, singing in a dialect I don't know, but the Spirit of God was there. And I'm telling you, it was like you was in heaven. And these people didn't have anything but God. And all of a sudden, while I'm there, wondering how in the world did I get here? This is the one that Brother Ray sent me on by myself. Got off in the middle of a, a Bush airport thinking, what if the dude ain't here this phone to pick me up? How'd I get in this thing? And I'm with, uh, who am I with, Vicky? What's the, uh, the, the, the man was a, a, a baseball star. And anyway, he, he's a, Bobby. Me, huh? Bobby Bonner. Bobby Bonner. And all of a sudden, this lady stands up in the back, and she starts singing and kind of doing a little march. 
And behind her, here comes some more. And me, I said, what are they singing about? He said, they are singing a testimony of me leaving America and all the wonderful things America's got in coming to this place in Zambia, Africa where the mosquitoes are and the hippopotamus is a big thing to kill you. And they got the black mambas and they got the, 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 the puff adders that'll spit at you in your eyes and blind you and then kill you. And here I met this man and then these people singing about him. And he's had malaria 17 times. One more time he's dead. And I'm thinking, what am I doing here? I mean, this guy's, this guy's, this is, well, who, the world doesn't even know these people. And the scripture says, of whom the world is not worthy. Woo, I get to be with these people. Yes. And I had these guys, Brother Garlic's grandson, get up here. Third generation. Oh, what's that worth? Oh, oh. Man, I don't need to be here. Now, I'm so glad I did. I am so glad I did it. I could have missed it. I could have missed it. Most miss it. Most miss it. Most never make it. I watched them. I watched that little old girl. I said, man, that old kid, you could drop that kid in a jungle with a knife. She'd make it. It just took the wrong person in her life. And she didn't make it. Good. But I see others. Marco Teresa come up, he said. I go down to Brother Tommy Ashcraft. I get the, I got the story, man. I had the son to be coming up, so I keep telling the story. I get to go down and meet Brother Tommy Ashcraft. What a man, what a man, what a ministry. Oh, my goodness. And I get to go down there and preach those, those college students, and we go out and do five-day clubs and teach them how to do backyard Bible clubs and Monterey, Mexico, and I go for year after year after year. Brother Marco Teresa comes up and he said, uh, Brother Jerry, I don't want to be a pastor. I want to do what you're doing. And of course, the criminal mind that I got, my wife said, you got a criminal mind. Well, I thought, well, he just wants to come to America to get money or something. I mean, what is this? Write me a letter. So he wrote a letter. Brother Tommy said, he's the best I've ever had. Brother Marco Teresa travels with me for three years, four years. Marries this wonderful person. I've got another story on that. But ends up going and being a child evangelist for Central America. Now, how'd that happen? Well, how'd I get in on that? It's, uh, I just happened to be in the middle of the will of God. Yeah. See, yeah. that's what happened. Yeah. I mean, it's a byproduct. Yeah. Oh, what kind of a byproduct is this? Oh, my goodness, you don't know. You just don't know. You're never going to get to really know till you get to the other side. And then when God pulls the curtain back and you see the stadiums full of people and you see what God really did with your life, you're going to shout and say, oh, my goodness, I can't believe it. I can't believe that this me turning my back on a stinking little old career that you would give me this. God doesn't want everybody to go to the mission field other than the mission field right around you. 
God might not have you go to Africa and eat monkey meat. I don't know. But I know God's got a super special plan for you. And every time, just like those three little kids back there, special kids. What has God got for them? Whoo! Oh my goodness. Just like the guy, when everybody came into class, he took his hat off to him. So what you do that for? I never know who's coming to my class. Well, he didn't know that Martin Luther was coming in there. You never know who's in front of you. Like FFA, Future Farmers of America. No, these are future missionaries, future soul winners, future preachers who the world wants and needs. Lord Jesus, I pray you'd bless what we've got tonight. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I just ask you a simple, simple question. How is your faith? How is your faith? Somebody said, uh, what is faith? Well, we used to have a little song with the kids. Faith is just believing what God says he will do. I won't sing more than that. As far as it'll go, I love to sing with kids because they don't know I'm out of tune. It's okay. They love it. I love to sing because they, they like it. What is faith? Forsaking all, I take him. What is faith? Just simply taking God at his Word. That's the reason kids have believing faith. Little kids have believing faith. Get them on a the ladder and say, jump. They'll jump. Get an adult up there and have a sheet and everything. Hey, jump. No, oh, no, wait a minute. I got to look. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. Not a kid. No, not a kid. No, kids are wonderful. They have believing faith. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken throughout the world, Romans 1.8. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You don't see an interesting thing about faith. You cannot please God without it. You cannot please God without it. We are... We are rank materialists in America. You and I are rank materialists. We have a great tendency to lean on, not the Word of God, but the things we can see, feel, and touch. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Word of God. But you first must believe. You first must believe in him and have trust and faith in him. Friend, I'm telling you, the scripture commands us to have faith in God, that we cannot please God without it. And this is called a Faith Promise Missions Conference. First word in the title, faith, faith. How is your faith? You can't please God without it. There is no other way. You must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Point number, got points on this one. Point number two. Man, this is a struggle for me. Struggle, struggle. God has made all his promises obtainable through faith in his word. This is his word. I know y'all believe this. Am I telling you anything you don't already know? No. My question was, how is your faith? How is it? How is your faith? God made promises. For all the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen, to the glory of God. Did you know, and all of us believe in this room, I don't have to reiterate this, 
that our salvation is by faith, for by faith are you saved, for by faith are you saved through grace, that not of yourselves the gift of God. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves it is a gift of God. Romans, Acts, Romans, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, Acts 16, 31, believe on, the name of the, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. We all believe that. That we're saved by what? Faith. Faith in his word. Our righteousness is by faith. Is it not? Amen. Isn't that good? Yes. Huh? Isn't that good? Yes. Aren't you glad yes. that your righteousness and my righteousness is filthy, dirty rags compared to God? But our righteousness, for what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Galatians 3, 6. Even as Abraham believed God, it was counted to him for righteousness. And the Scripture is fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. I read it to you last night. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew, who knew no sin, that you and I, we might be made the righteousness of God in him. By faith. Hallelujah. Is that good or not? Yes. yes. How is your faith? I am justified before God because of my faith. Therefore, in Romans 5, 1, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If I were to ask you tonight, do you know you're saved? How would you, what would you say? Well, of course I know I'm saved. How do you know? Because the scripture says it. So you're putting your trust in this book that you're saved. Yes. So you're trusting eternity on what you're saying. You're trusting eternity on what you're saying. Yes or no? Hey, man, that's serious stuff. I mean, we're talking about the lake of fire in the bottomless pit forever and ever and ever and ever. I mean, don't even think about that. I can't. It hurts my mind to even think about it. I can't, I can't put my arms around eternity without Christ. I can't do it. I can't put my mind around it. So we're literally hanging on the Word of God right over the lake of fire. You're hanging on it. Don't let go. Hanging on it. How is your faith? Your righteousness is by faith. Your justification is that means just as if I'd never sinned, is by faith. Yes. Everything we got in stand on this book is by faith. Question, how is your faith? Hebrews eleven seven 7, by faith Noah being warned of God, of things not seen as yet moved with fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, whoo, which is by faith. Noah built that ark by faith because he believed God was going to destroy the world. How is your faith tonight? This is faith promise missions. We got missionaries coming up here saying, man, we're, we're stepping out by faith. We're going to trust God to meet our needs. How is your faith? You know, interestingly enough now, you're justified, you're saved. Do you know the scripture commands that you now live by faith? Romans 1, 17, Thereby is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, for it is written as it is written, the just, what's the just? The justified shall, Scripture, live by what? Faith. Not sight, faith. Man, alive. Galatians 3, 11, But that no man is justified by the law and the sight of God is evident, for the just shall Live by faith. Who in the world knows what it's like to live by faith, to step off and step out the boat? You've got to step out of the boat, friend. Yes, oh, now, wait a minute. No, no, no. Uh-uh. No, no. We don't stay in the boat anymore. 
you got to step out. Well, well, step out? Well, that's water, sir. Well, see, Jesus, he's walking on it. He's asking you to come out with him. Well, I just don't know about this. Well, I ask you a question tonight. How is your faith? When I knelt down and God said, I want you to be a kid's preacher. Whew. Okay. I remember I gave myself to you. I'm not sure I know what it is. I didn't have lights gone, didn't have a spooky feeling. But guess what I did? Tell you what I did. I stepped outside the boat. The safety of the boat. I have a question. Now, God's done commanded. Brother Wells, every one of us, you're saved, you're justified, correct? Yes, everybody. Okay, you are to live by faith. The fact of the matter is, the Bible says, what's where it was not a faith is sin. Oh, yeah. Man, we're not, we're not talking about gross sin. No, no, we're just talking about faith. How is your faith tonight? How's your faith? How's your faith? Now, the Scripture has commanded. It doesn't matter what we think. We're justified by faith. We are righteousness by faith. Our very salvation is by faith. We believe in this book. We've got the, we, we've got the promises of this book. Okay, Scripture says, okay, now get them, get them, get them. Now walk out. Oh, walk out, hold on, walk out. Now I want you to, one step at a time, one step at a time, by faith. Come on, one step at a time, by faith. Not by sight. We'll be by sight when we get on the other side. We're not on the other side yet. Now, I, I don't want to... Uh, uh. Hebrews 10, 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. All right, this is another point. Somehow I got to E. Okay? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, I love you in Jesus' name. I tell you, I just get verses and read them and holler them, verses and read them and holler, but I walk down this path. First Peter 1, 7, that the trial of your faith, you will be tested. Your faith will be tested. Everybody's faith individually will be tested. God does not test you to bring you down. He tests you to bring you up. Amen. Satan tempts us to throw us down. God tests us to forge us and make us into a tempered faith that will not bend and will not break. Amen. You will be tested. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than gold at $1,600 an ounce that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found of the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God has to have a step out the boat. You've got to start living by faith as best you can. You will be tested, but he does that to glorify himself in and through you. Amen. Telling you. There is no telling what power is in this room. There is no telling who it is or what it is I'm speaking to. That if they were to step out the boat by faith, just like you stepped out to get saved and trust Jesus and you trusted him for your righteousness, you trusted him that you are justified before him, and now he commands you through the scripture, simple as it is, that you cannot please God otherwise you remember the old boy that got all the goods gotta have a drink here do you put anything in this 
Okay. Just one? Okay. Remember the old boy, the scripture that pulled down his barns? Remember that? You know, when you read that, would you get the idea? Maybe he did something God wasn't quite pleased with. Would you say that? What he was doing was, he had enough wealth stored up. He said, take it easy, buddy. Everything's going to be all right for years to come. Now, God doesn't like that. God doesn't like that. Why? He wants you to be trusting in him, in him alone. To have goods and money and stuff, it's not talking about that. It's when you start resting on these things. That no matter what happens, it's not him. It's my contingency that those things are going to take care of me. Friend, I'm telling you now, you read the scriptures, you'll get, get the mind of God. He's going to test your faith and mind. He's got to. You've got to step out and learn how to walk by faith in this life and do the will of God. There's examples all through the scripture. And of course, uh, Abraham is our father of faith. And the scripture says, He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, him it is sin, James 4, 17. That to trial your faith, you know, God asked Abraham, what did he first ask him to do in Genesis 12, 1? He said, uh, the, Now the Lord said to Abram, Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, from thy father's house into a land that I'll show thee. Is anybody in here ever heard of Brother Kevin Wynn? Her brother Kevin Wynn, he's a wonderful missionary, Brother Kevin Wynn. You ever heard his story, how he got saved? And, you know, I'm, I'm talking with him. When, when I was down in Mexico, say, I don't remember. I'm talking with him. Maybe it's at a mission conference somewhere. And Brother Kevin said, you know, it's, a, it's an awful thing when I had to walk away from my daddy and I had to say goodbye to my dad because I knew when I went to Mexico I couldn't come back and probably my dad was going to die and I wasn't going to be there when he died. And uh, I just said, my goodness, what an awful price to pay. But he paid the price. He paid the price, and God's using him. God's got to try my faith in yours. Abraham, he tried Abraham's faith. He said, Abraham, leave your folks. This is a sprint moment. Drop a pin. But I don't want my kids to leave me. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Your kids don't belong to you. Mm -mm. Do what? I said, your kids don't belong to you. Uh, what does it say about if your quiver's full of them? Doesn't it say something about a quiver being full? You know, that's your children. Well, what's in a quiver? What, what, what are those things in a quiver? Arrow. Oh, arrow. Oh, what's an arrow for? Is it made to stay in the quiver? What's an arrow made for? It's to what? At the enemy, correct? So when you shoot the arrow, whoo! See you later. Amen. Sorry about that. <laughs> Your children do not belong to you. They're loaned to you by God. Yeah. They're arrows. Shoot them. Amen. Let God shoot them. Yeah. They're smart bombs for God. I'm telling you, God said, Abraham, leave. And what did the father of our faith do? He turned his back in the Ur of the Chaldees and left them. Where was he going? Ask, hey, we need a microphone. Abraham, 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 come over here. Abraham, hey, Abraham, where are you going? Tell him. You got me. God said, go, I'm going. Did he not say that? Did he know where he was going? If you'd asked me, hey, Pertel, man, you left this book. Where in the world are you going? Got me, buddy. I'm, I just, hey, I'm, right here, I got to take this next step. Are you sure you know where you're going? No, man, it's foggy, man. I cannot see ahead. I don't have fog lamps. Where are you going? He just keeps telling me I keep taking this step one step at a time. Now, you take one step at a time, one step at a time. 45 years later, you're going to look back and you're going to say, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Abraham left. Now, what's God going to do? God is fixing to bless the planet with this man. 
because he did what? He stepped out by faith and turned his back on what everybody wants to be around. And friend, I am telling you, I love my kids as much as anybody, and I, I've never got to be close to my kids. I've never got to be close to my mom and dad. They, they're, now they're gone to heaven. They're always 700 miles away no matter where I was. And, you know, I, I wanted to be somewhere else. And Lisa and them's always saying, uh, Daddy, when are you going to uh, uh, quit and come be my? I said, God's not letting me quit yet. I don't know, man. I w I'd love to be my kids and grandkids and all that stuff, but it just hadn't happened for me. It just hadn't happened. And all I can tell you, I'm trying to walk by faith. I'm trying to do the will of God. What else am I going to do? And it's a wonderful journey, but you are going to be tried, friend. And God's going to ask you to do something, and you're going to have to step out the boat. And everybody else is going to say, what are you doing? It's because we're surrounded by materialists. We are ourselves. That's all we, you and I know. It's the way we're raised. Hey, I, I'm not against anybody in this room. I'm one of you. And you know, Abraham has got plans. And all of a sudden, God said, uh, uh, you know the new boy you got? Yeah, the Lord. Boy, I, it's the one I prayed for. It's the one you, yeah. Said, Go take him up the mountain and we'll have a sacrifice there. And friend, all I can tell you is this. You and I think that you and I are strong in the faith. And nobody in this room would do this. I don't think. I don't think there's one in this room to get their son. If God said, go take him up and sacrifice him, say, whoa, boy, you're going one too far right there. One too far. Am I telling the truth? Look at me in the face. Yeah. Now, of course, the grace of God, you'd say, well, the grace of God, okay. Well, Abraham did that supreme test of his faith. Did he pass the test? Did he pass the test? Yes, he passed the test. And now what's happened to us? What God had him look at the stars and now he's a blessing to the whole world Hebrews 11 of whom it is said that Isaac and thy son shall be called accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence he received him in a figure in other words Abraham believed that God was going to raise his son up if he had to kill him on the top of that altar. And we know what happened. Now you could turn to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and read the hall of fame of faith if you would. But let me just read a verse or two. Who, who through faith subdued kingdoms, this is 33 through 39, wrought righteousness, obtained promises. When's the last time you obtained a promise out of this book? When's the last time you had to have something? You, you had a promise right out of this yes, book. Sir. You obtained a promise. When's the last time? Now, friend, I'm telling you, that's in Hebrews 11 chapter. This is the hall of fame of these people, hall of faith. When's the last time that you had to have something? Well, what you did, we got it by other means. We didn't get it by supernatural means. God is wanting to supply your need. He's wanting to meet your need, but he can't do it if you don't step out the boat. God can't do it. You've got to be tested, and when he tests you, you run to the promises of God. Believing him, you obtain the promises, and then you shout because your faith is growing, because it does work. God is in the prayer answering business by faith. Amen. Obtain promises, stop the mouths of lions, quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness was made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured, ex not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had a trial of cruel mockings and scourging, shame over bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, they were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. My goodness! Oh my goodness! God help us! I'm a pygmy. I'm a pygmy. 
in my faith. Oh, you thought I was preaching to you tonight? Did you think I was preaching to you? This is for me. See, every time I point my finger at you, there's three back at me. This is classic. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and dens and caves of the earth. All these, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. What was the promise they didn't receive? The Messiah. My neighbors thought I was crazy. I walked around the block. Well, I like to walk and pray, but later I haven't been. I walk around the block just like this. I'd be talking. Lord, you know that show? You let me go to the fairs and festivals. Man, my, my Bible stories are not working anymore. Those little films I've been showing. I mean, I'm talking like this. I'm sure they're thinking, the guy's crazy. There he goes. Look at him talking to himself. God, you got to do something, man. My ministry's dying going to the fairs and festivals. What can I get to get these kids interested in? What am I doing? I did this. Two years I did this. Walked around the block, walked around the block, walked around. I talked to God. You got to help me, Lord. Man, I'm telling you, Lord, just give me something. I don't know what to do. I go to Walmart. Vicky said, go to Walmart. I see some, I need something at Walmart. I walk into Walmart. I'm walking by all those TVs. You know, there's 100 TVs there, and they're all got something on. They had Jurassic Park on. I've never seen it or heard it. Never heard it. And all of a sudden, all these dinosaurs come up and say, whoa, look at that. Whoa, you talk about it. I need a movie on dinosaurs. But what does a dinosaur have to do with salvation? A lot. God made them. Yeah, that's it. Man, I call over America. I call Bob Jones University. I call everybody. Man, is that, anybody make a show on dinosaurs? Nobody made a show on dinosaurs. No such thing. Dinosaurs and man live together? Yeah. Long story short, I made 350 slides, 350 slides of every picture of every dinosaur, all kind of scientific stuff, dinosaurs and everything, bones and fossils. I put them on a big white, a big uh, light board, and for two or three days, I just stared at that and got down on the computer and started typing the text. And now I've got a dinosaurs and the flood of Noah. And I guarantee you, 150, 200,000 minimum have watched it. Minimum. Wow. And those people thought I was crazy. Well, I just walked around the block until God gave me what I needed. Good for sure. yeah. I mean, Good. hey, look, folks, 45 years. 45 years of it. 45 years of it. Lord, now, I'm bragging on Jesus. He's the creator. I'm bragging on him but to a bunch of boys and girls that'll never hear. Nobody's ever going to go by their house. I'm lifting you up as the creator God. Who else is doing that out here? And you've got to give me what I need. Lord, I need a pickup, and i got a pickup. i got a one-ton dually. I didn't ask anybody about it. I didn't put it in my newsletter. Amen. Amen. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I just didn't do it. How's your faith? It's going to be tested. It's going to be tested. But guess what? God doesn't test to break you. God tests to hone you and sharpen you, temper the steel, and make your faith strong and stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, let me give you a few practical points. How can a person nowadays live a life of faith? Number one. I'm trying to do this right. Number one, what truth in God's Word do you have for your own? Okay. In other words, 
What are the truths in this book you know and you believe right now? Well, you're saved. Okay, we got those. What about the truth of tithing? Do you know that one? Have you got that down? Do you believe it? You said, I really believe it. Okay, now what you need to do is step out the boat. How do you step out the boat? Do it. Just do it. You said, do you do it? Absolutely. Do I do it? Oh, boy, do I do it? Yes. Step out the boat. Why? Well, I, I, I can't afford it. Oh, no, no, no. That's okay. That's okay. God knows that. Now, this is like faith promise given. I mean, but he told us how much to give, 10%. Okay. Well, my goodness. Uh, okay, I'm going to do it. Okay, that's it. Now, how to, how to live by faith today, what is it you know that you ought to do? Do you know that one? You said, I don't know that one yet. Okay, you need to get in the Scripture and find out. Is it true? You said it's true. Did God say it? Yes, he said it. All right, the same verses you're using to say, I know I'm saved, I know I'm saved for sure, and the devil comes against you, and he's throwing his dark. Bam, 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 bam. Can't get me now. I believe that. Okay, well, now we've got some more truth for you. Some more truths God giving you light here that you ought to give 10%. Well, yeah, it's true. It looks like it's in there. Okay, let's do it. By God's grace, by faith, we're going to do it by faith. We're going to step out by faith and do it. Church doesn't need it. No, it's not the church. It's God wants to glorify himself in you that you do live by faith. Now, wait. What time is it? <clears throat> oh, man. Are y'all now? I'm an independent Baptist. Okay, yeah. y'all know? Are y'all independent Baptists? Yeah. Independent Baptists. Now I, I use the King James Bible. Y'all use the King James Bible. Yeah. Can we do that, right? Okay. Now, being an independent Baptist, use the King James Bible. Uh, everybody seems to dress pretty good and everything. That's good. D does that mean uh, that you're right with God? No. Okay. Uh, when you go to a grocery store, can they tell that that's who you're? Well, they can look at you and tell you're, you're different. But you see, the only way I know to judge you is how you live. I am justified before God by my faith. I'm justified before my fellow man by my actions. There is no other way. Okay. This is Faith Promise Missions Conference. You know these men have needs. And you know that we're to live by faith. And you know God's interested in missions. So, now you know that according to Scripture, God wants to reach the world, and it takes money to reach the world. One and one equal two. The problem is we need people to go. Well, we got something going. Well, now, what's the next step? We need something to send them with. Okay. Well, could, could God tell you what he wants you to give? Would that be possible? Yes, sir. Especially if you were willing to obey by faith to do what he says. Would you be willing if he told you? No. Oh, now, wait a minute. We live by faith, okay? Is God going to ever ask you to do something you cannot do? No. And besides that, guess who's going to give it to you to begin with? Yeah. Guess who gives you the money you got? Hello? Yeah. Where do you get your money? I earn it. How come you get to earn it? Who gave you the mind to do it? Who gave you the health and the body to do it? Who gave you the, body? Who gave you the job to begin with? It all comes from him. Okay, so what we do, find the truth in the word of God that you know, and by God's grace, start living it. And it's a sin for you to worry about it. The Bible says in Romans 14, 23, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat because he eateth not of faith. Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And the scripture says, casting all your care on him for he careth for you. God wants to bless you and use you beyond your imagination, but you've got to step outside the boat. 
Number three. Take God at his word and prove him. Prove him. Take God at his word and prove him. Now, after walking with the Lord and these 45 years being in the ministry, seeing everything but the wind, seeing everything but the wind, is my faith stronger or leaner? Well, it's stronger. Why? Because he's never let me down. God's never let me down. He's always taking care. Even when others didn't take care, he took care. Because he's interested in what I'm doing. I'm touching the apple of his eye, which is boys and girls. I'm bragging on Jesus to them. I remind him that all the time. Lord, I'm telling these little children about you. Now you've got to keep the devil and the demons of hell away from me. And you've got to take care of me, protect me, and keep me going. Lord, you're the one. And all these years he's done it. He's never let me down. And you get these dear people coming up and showing all the wonderful things that God's doing. You can be part of that. You may not go right now, maybe later, who knows. But you can live up to the light that God's given you. And you know these truths that God will have you do. He gives you grace to do them. He gives you every material thing you do to do the job. All kind of scriptures in the Word of God. Look at Psalms. Well, you don't look there. Let me just quote it to you. Psalms 37, 4 and 3 and 4. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land. And verily shall thou, thou shall be saved. Get it now. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Yeah. Try him out on that one, buddy. Try him out on that one. Oh, dear, how do I delight myself in the Lord? Step out the boat. Step out the boat. Woo, it's good, man. It's good. It's wonderful. Delight thyself also in the Lord. What does that mean? I'm delighting in you. I'm giving it. You reckon giving to missionaries would please the Lord? You think giving your tithe would please the Lord? Come on, man. Let's get out the boat. Get out the boat. You would please the Lord. Delight thyself also, Lord. Give you desires of your heart. Oh, man, I want, I want $10,000. I want to win the lottery. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now, when you delight yourself in the Lord, that means I want to do what he wants me to do. Right. Well, guess what? Amen. He already wants you to do that. So if you want to do what he wants you to do, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Y'all all right? Yes, God is better than good. God wants to be to you. He wants to be to you the God that he really is. Super Amen. natural. God wants to pull the curtain back and show you things, friend, that only he could do. There is no other answer to it. God wants to give you funds, if you would, as trust God, that will come where you've never thought or could even be possible. I've had it happen time and time and time and time. Steve, uh, Stephen Bedwell traveled me. He said, Uncle Jerry, I'm telling you, I've watched it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. God, take care of you. Amen. Yes, sir. Put tires on my trailer. Drunk guy tries to turn me in like I'm some pervert or something. In a fair midnight. Everybody's drunk. And a Southern Baptist preacher on the outside of the gate passing tracks out knows the sheriff. This guy goes up to the sheriff, said the guy in the, in the, in the bus is no good. Go get him. And he's drunk too. Well, he goes over to that guy and said, that guy's straight. Leave him alone. He let me alone. Whew, by the thread. He let me alone. By the grace of God. If you would... But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Ephesians 3.20. Now unto him who is able... I want you to turn there. Would you turn there with me, please? Ephesians 3.20. Ephesians 3.20. 
Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh in him, and to, uh, working in us, unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ through ages to come. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray right now. I had a bunch more to say. I'm going to stop right there. Now, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would just do a work tonight, do a work in all our hearts. And I pray not one person will leave here not right with you. And as we got our heads bowed and eyes closed, I just want to ask you a question. Do you know for sure, for certain, that you're on your way to heaven? You said, Brother Jerry, I know I'm on my way to heaven. I want you to just hold your hand up if you know you're on your way to heaven. Everybody, you know you're on your way to heaven. Everybody, put your hands down. Brother Jerry, I really want to learn to walk by faith. I do. I want to learn to walk by faith. Pray that God will have his will in my life that I learn to walk by faith that will please him. Would you please raise your hand and let me pray for you. Said, I really want to learn to walk by faith. Thank you and God bless you. Now, Lord, you see these hands. I pray that you do a work in the hearts of these dear people that raise their hands up. And I pray if, if any of them, uh, Lord, you called them to the mission field, they'd step out the boat by faith. And Lord, they'd walk forward and commit that to you. And Lord, that you've laid on their hearts some amount to give. I pray that you would by your wonderful grace, please, Lord, please, that they step out and walk by faith and see you do a miracle in their life. Now, as we've got our heads bowed and eyes closed, here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to pray and ask the Lord to show you, to show you what he would have you give by faith. And he'll provide every bit of it by his wonderful grace. I want you to pray right now in your heart and just ask Jesus what he'd have you to give for this mission conference for next year to support these missionaries. Now, Lord, we commit all this to you. Thank you for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brother. Let's all stand, please, if you would, with heads bowed and eyes closed. Don't forget what we said on Sunday uh, as I preached on the blessing of giving Sunday morning. If you give to God in a thimble, he'll give it back to you in a thimble pressed down, running together. He said he'll give it to you with the same measurement that you gave to him. If you give it to him in a cup, he'll give it back to you in a cup. It'll be pressed down, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom the same way it is uh, in uh, giving to him in a, oh, just a, a bucket or a five-gallon drum or whatever the case may be. God is right and God is always true and God will always be just with the way he returns to you. And so let's be careful to consider what God would have us to give give during this faith promise giving conference father bless i pray our invitation time now i beg you please help us to begin to get clarity about what you'd have us to give boys and girls and teenagers and men and women all over the world in need of the gospel help us to partner with you as also we partner with the missionaries to make sure that the gospel gets given out around the world and lord we thank you for it in jesus name Amen. As they begin to play, maybe you need to step out and come and say, Father, give me clarity. Give me clarity. I need a little bit more clarity about what you'd have me to give. Maybe that's you. Maybe you need to come and get on your knees and pray and say, Dear Father, please help me. I want to please you. I want to obey you. I'm just not sure about what you'd have me to do. Be honest before the Lord and tell the Lord that. The Lord will give you clarity. The Lord will give you direction. He's very good at that, by the way. He doesn't leave you, if you would please, without a sense of direction. He'll show you what to do as you step out in obedience to Him. Allow God to show you. Would you do that? Would you do that? Would you do that? You say, well, what if He shows me to do something that I'm not uh, positive that I can do? Oh, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Yes, I believe he can help you every step of the way, every step of the way. Oh, isn't it amazing how God gives to those who give, to those who give. There's been times where somebody would say, boy, I sure do like that tie, and God would impress my heart and press my heart to give him my tie, and I'd take it off and give it to him, and amazingly how God would replace it. There's been times when people would come and say, you know, I, I sure do like this, sure do like that. And, and if the Lord would lead me, I'd give it to him. And in so doing, God would bless me with more. Isn't it something how God blesses obedience? Isn't it something how God blesses obedience? 
God will bless you too as you obey. God will bless you too as you obey. What about you? What about you? All right, look right up here. Do we have any closing announcements for tonight? Yeah, no, the, the special offering. Uh, go ahead and be seated, if you will. We gave the regular offering. We'll take an offering again, uh, just in case you didn't put it in the first time. Uh, you can put it in tonight with a second time, and uh, we'll check the other to make sure as well. And so that way it's clear about the giving tonight. And so if you came prepared to help to purchase or to be a blessing so that missionaries can go and get uh, an outfit or so tomorrow, then uh, we'll take that offering. Ushers, you come. Would you come? Would you come, please? Come on now, right up here. And uh, thank you, Brother Pertel. Wasn't that a blessing? Amen? Amen. There's nothing about knowing and walking in the will of God. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it at all. What a wonderful place that's to be all the days of your life. Now, Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for the privilege to be able to help. Lord, thank you for those that's already given, those that's about to give, to be able to help uh, with the special thing we want to do for our missionary friends. Bless, uh, we do pray this offering now, please. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you give. Thank you. God bless you. Let's all stand, will you, please? And uh, thank you. You, you, you. About five or six of you clapped for them. That was good. That was good. Amen. That's good. Hey, don't forget the missionaries. Now we're asking you not to hold them down too long because we're going to feed them tonight. And, uh, and so we eat over in the gym. So in about 10 minutes, missionaries, if you don't mind, kind of just kindly say to the person that's up to you, oh, I'm sorry, I got to go now. And they'll, they'll understand we have good, caring people. They understand that we've got to get some food in your belly tonight. And so that's good. Well, it's been good. Now, don't forget, tomorrow night, Marco Teresa is going to be preaching. You'll enjoy Brother Marco. And, uh, and so he'll be preaching tomorrow night. Uh, I asked him to come with me. I do pastor's conferences in the Philippines. And I asked him to meet me over there. So he flew from Mexico over the Philippines as we conduct different uh, pastor's conferences in different countries around the world. We did one there. And he was there, and can I tell you, he did a super job in helping the pastors to get a burden for reaching children and reaching those uh, with the gospel. And so he'll be preaching tomorrow night. What a blessing that is. And then, of course, uh, Saturday, regular soul winning time, uh, 10 o'clock. We've not had soul winning times. We have nine different, different times to go out. We've not had any other times to be able to go except for Saturday. So if you've not been able to go on Thursday night, which is tonight, and if you're here, you've not been able to go. And so please come out Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Would you do that, please? Come out Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Say, I'm not used to that. Well, come out and go 
go out for a half hour. Going out for a half hour is better than not going out at all. Uh, and so come and go for an hour. Or come, go for two hours. Come and go for the whole day. Stay out till midnight. I don't care. Just come. Just come and be a part of it on Saturday. And that would be a, a very good blessing for you. Keep you in the routine. And somebody needs to hear about Jesus. And so you come and be a part of that. And then Sunday morning, our missionaries will be teaching in various Sunday school classes. That's our adult Sunday school classes. And so you be sure to be there on time. And then, of course, Brother Marco preaches Sunday morning. Brother Pertel Sunday night to close it out. Father, bless, we pray. Thank you for tonight. And Lord, as we get ready to sing our way out, I pray that you'll give us a, a good night. Some of us travel a long distance to be able to come to church. And Lord, bless those that live way out in the country, or those deep in the uh, heart of Dallas. Uh, protect them as they go their way or in other cities. And then, Father, bring us back, uh, Father, tomorrow night or tomorrow morning for the preaching service upstairs at 11. Bless, I do pray. And in Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing our way out. God bless you. We're going to sing the song Living by Faith. It's page number 34. We'll sing the verse and the chorus. Page 34 in your songbook. Amen.